welding the patch here in uh, in the cab. And uh, full disclosures, uh, I'm I'm not a professional auto body guy. I'm just uh, kind of learning and going on my own at home here. And uh, I guess this was the product of one of my first attempts where it was burning through and this is pretty ugly. So I decided to cut that out of there. And uh, most important is prep work. If you, if you can cut a patch piece that's uh, true, nice straight uh, ends on there and stuff like that. And then likewise with the spot that it's, it's gonna fill um, and you got a nice consistent gap all the way around. Um, the prep is going to be way better than the skill as a welder. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way for you because of the location. Um, you know, making the patch piece was easy enough, but cutting the, uh, the hole in here to put the patch in uh, wasn't quite as good. So I tried to get in there with the, with the grinder and it'll only go in so far and you know we're cutting in here try to get this out and uh i also got the uh five inch grinder there to make things uh, a little quicker and what ended up happening was we ended up with a little excessive gap here on the on both of the ends so you gotta you gotta make do with what you got and uh what i what i did was I used a, a magnet and I'd put the magnet on here and I'd, I would hold the piece in place with the magnet. And then after I, I got that uh, kind of located, I start from the center. So tack it here, tack it here. And then what I did was I, from underneath, I would, I would deliberately push it up on both ends so that it's, that it's up too high. And then I slowly kind of press it down till it's, till it's uh, lined up here, and then I would slowly tack. Now each tack, uh, get some compressed air, get that heat out of there right away. And, uh, and then when we got to the ends here, with that gap, uh, what I did was I just, I got the, I got the welder, I just held, held it away, and I'm more dropping the metal into the, into the gap here, rather than close, because if you're too close, that's just gonna blow out on you. It's gonna gonna cause you a bunch of trouble. But once you get some some good tacks established here, then you can work off of those tacks, right? You can work back off of those. So I just hold hold it back a ways and uh, kind of drop the metal in there, and then it doesn't blow it out, make it bigger, and uh, get it all tacked into place. Cool it down with the air. More tacks, more cooling, and uh, the more that you have in here now that you've got this in here, uh, you don't have to worry about the heat as much because the more tacks you got in place, the, the better it's gonna do. So um, that's the start there. Here we are after we got that uh, patch all stitched in. And remember, if, uh, if you're not a professional, don't expect it to look professional. And also, too, once we grind this down and smooth it out, there's going to be little, there'll be little pockets and uh, imperfections and stuff like that. But that's what the body filler is for, to to smooth all that out. You just want a nice, consistent uh, weld so that it's that it's all welded up, no gaps, no holes. And uh, so now I'll just be uh, cleaning up. When you're welding this in. If you're having troubles, uh, make sure your clamp's always as close to work as possible. And uh, that might that might help if you got like say some sticking issues or something like that. Um, play around with your space between the, the nozzle and the work. As I said here where the gap was larger, I just pull the nozzle away and I'm more dropping the, the weld in into the gap rather than real close. Real close, there's lots of heat there. It's gonna make the hole bigger. You pull it away and uh, it's gonna kind of reduce the, the heat to the, the source there. And if you have to, you, you know, uh, you grind it down and tack it again. And then uh, also too, once we have this all tacked up real nice, I just target a little spot 
and I would maybe put two, three tucks in there, and then and then I would uh, hit it with the compressed air, cool it down, and then find another spot. And I just kept working like that all the way around and uh, get her all welded in. Also, as you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're you're keeping you're keeping your uh, weld zone clean. So you want to scrub in there with a, a wire brush or something like that, and uh, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, when you get and you start doing your welding, otherwise it it might uh, might be sticking or it might not arc right away. So uh, close ground, clean clean uh, work gap with the with the brush, and uh, just a lot of patience. Here we are after she's all grinded down, and uh, what I do is I I don't want to throw away my my zippy discs off. Uh, for the five inch grinder because you get them nice and small like this, they can get in to these tight spots if you're lucky. Gotta be really careful grinding with these, not supposed to grind with them, but I do. Then uh, you got your flapper disc here. You could get back in here for the most part with your flapper disc to make it nice and smooth. And then, uh, and then the stuff I can't get the flapper disc for, then I just got my carbide bit here. And I'll, I'll get into the tight spots with the carbide bit. So it's turned out not bad. There's a pocket here, but that was basically from, I think the metal before, right? It wasn't a mistake or anything that we made when we put the patch in, but uh, it's nice and nice and smooth. And it's it's welded, it's welded solid through I think, and a uh, little bit of a little bit of bondo, and uh, if you wanted to put some uh, some body filler bondo in there, it should uh, smooth it out and it'd be be all right. Anyone who's uh, interested in what I'm using for rig here, it's just a uh, a Lincoln Mig Pack Ten here. And I'm using flux core wire, and I got my my wire speed at about three and a half, and I got it set to uh, B for the range. Also, too, you can always open up the door, and it'll have uh, instructions in there, and it'll it'll tell you what what settings you want to start off with um, for whatever you're welding, and then you adjust it from there uh, depending on how the machine's behaving.